Hello there and welcome back to my workshop. This is boot bench show number five. I'm going to be finishing up our boot bench on this show and that's always very exciting to get a project finished. But before we do that, I want to share with you another project that came along into the shop. A friend of ours asked me if I would make for her a little keepsake box. Her father passed away not long ago and she wanted a small box to store mementos and photographs of her dad. So I said, sure, I could do that. And we invited her over and uh, I showed her some of the boxes I had made in other projects and she brought these with her. Check these out, horseshoes. These were her dad's and they were a big part of family get togethers and cookouts. And she wanted to know if I could incorporate these into the design of the box. So I looked at them and uh, I thought they would make nice handles. So uh, here's what I came up with. Made a little cardboard box. You know me in cardboard. And I thought if we contained it like this, it might make a nice box. So we talked about other things, the color of the stain and so forth. And she said, I love this idea, go with it. And uh, I trust that you'll make something that I like. So uh, I appreciate that. And uh, let me show you what I came up with. There it is. And uh, what I did was I have a, a turn button on the front here. You can see that. And the lid slides open like that. And I have these battens holding the, the handles on because I didn't want to use any fasteners or screws or anything. I wanted to leave these completely untouched, really. So I think it turned out really nice. And uh, Jonine gave me a great idea. I was going to stain the inside of the box and the outside of the box. And she said, why not leave the inside of the box completely untouched, unfinished? So that's what I did. And look at this. I just love the aged patina on the outside of the box. And yet, on the inside, it's almost like a surprise. You see the bright color and the vibrant wood grain. So I think those two together on the same box is a nice feature to have, especially for a box of this kind. So she's coming over this weekend to pick this up and I wanted to share it with you before it leaves my workshop. It's always fun when you can make something special for a special friend. We'll be right back. And we're back and ready to finish our project. I think I mentioned uh, at the end of the last show that I wanted to do something challenging outside my comfort zone and something I hadn't done before. So I've come up with something. It's called folk art painted furniture. Um, that's a tradition that's kind of all over the world. People everywhere seem to like to paint designs and uh, inspirational things, decorative things on their furniture. Uh, some people used hex signs and good luck symbols, geometric shapes, uh, floral arrangements and things like that. And I've always been amazed at the variety of things that are, that are out there. So uh, Jonine and I looked at hundreds of images and came up with something that I think is, uh, is going to work for us. So I just want to show you uh, roughly what we're going to be working on here. This is a, a test board I did that I can practice on and it'll give you an idea of what we're doing. This is what the front will look like. And the chest that we saw, we really, uh, we really liked these, uh, these panels. They, uh, they're almost always square and they almost always have that arched top on them. And we really like that. And then inside, it's like a frame for uh, the artwork that goes there. And uh, let me just show you an example of the kind of thing that might go there. Something like that. I just think that looks really nice. Now, uh, we're not going to use this particular design. I had to come up with my own. And uh, these are some of the elements I used here, just cutting and pasting various things that I thought would work. And then I added to that with some leaves and stems and rearranged things. And while I was doing that, Jonine started working on the color. These aren't our final colors, but they're giving us an idea of what's going on with the color. And then what I did was I recomposed this so it will fit inside of our frames. And then uh, this yellow paper here 
is transfer paper and I transfer this image onto stencil paper and then I'll be using the stencils to apply the, uh, the designs. So that's the idea for the front. Now for the, uh, for the sides, let me swing this around. For the sides, aren't I clever? These are pineapples. Pineapple is a symbol of hospitality. I thought that would work great for the sides. And this was applied with a stencil. Uh, my first try with a stencil. And you can see I'm experimenting with some of the colors here. These darker colors I thought would be nice, but they're too dark against the blue. So uh, we're working on that. And then finally, for the, uh, for the top here, or back, I want to put a crest. Something to just kind of crown the whole thing. And I think that would look really nice. And I think that's about enough decoration for, uh, for this project. There's going to really be something uh, interesting to look at. So the next step is going to be, what's the next step again? Base coat. Yes, the base coat of milk paint. Thank you, dear. I need cue cards. <laughs> the base coat of milk paint. And we're going to be applying that all over. And then we're going to take it from there. So we'll be right back. And here we are after two coats, a little light sanding with 400 grit sandpaper in between. Light sanding, you don't want to sand through your finish. And then later on what we're going to do is put a top coat of polyurethane. And uh, that gives it a nice sheen and brings out the color. Now, I know I just said you don't want to sand through your top coat, but here's an example where you might want to do just that. A couple years ago I did a series on the Japanese toolbox and I made a number of them in different sizes and different finishes. And on this one what I did was I gave it a base coat inside and out of white and then I put a, two coats on top of green and then I sanded through the top coats and you can see uh, the white base coat showing through gives it kind of a folksy, I don't know, sort of an antique look. I think they call that shabby chic. Um, but uh, there's lots you can do with these finishes. Now, next up what we're going to do is these panels. We're going to paint these panels on here. If you remember, that's what they look like. So I'll be laying them out. I'm going to be masking and then I'm going to put two coats of white down. And then I'm going to mask again because we're going to put a border, a colored border that goes all the way around each of the panels. So I think that's going to be uh, self-explanatory as I go along. So uh, you'll see.
Okay, and here are our panels. A little bit more involved than I thought they were going to be. Painting these white fields on here and masking them was pretty simple, but painting these borders was very difficult or time consuming because they've got inside edges and outside edges and also inside corners, which had to be masked in a two-step process. I think you saw I was masking the verticals first then I had to paint them, and then I masked the horizontals and painted them. So a lot of room for error to occur there, and fortunately, they worked just fine. Now, one of the concerns I had was that the paint was going to bleed into the masked areas, and that didn't happen. And the other concern was that as I peeled the masking off, I'd be peeling off layers of paint underneath, and that didn't happen. So very happy about that. Here are a couple products that really helped me out there. This uh, masking tape, it's actually called frog tape. I tried a, a couple different types and this turned out to be the best. So uh, that's why I have these nice clean lines. And then I also used for the uh, curved lines, I used this masking film. And as you saw, I traced on the curves and then I cut them out with an X-Acto blade. And then this has an adhesive backing, and I just peeled that off and attached it and then stenciled right through it. Worked out really well. So you can uh, check the links below, and you'll see more information on these products. And then I also used these daubers. You can get these in art supply stores, and uh, very useful for stenciling as well. And then I just used the regular artist's acrylic paint here, which worked out uh, just right. So the next step is going to be tracing on our pineapples and our flower bunches onto more of this blue stuff. Then we're going to cut that out and apply our paint with those. So we'll be right back.
and our stencil is on finally very meticulous i think you saw that too and rather risky because at this point there's no room for error i had to get it right the first time and i'm very happy you can see the nice crisp lines here and uh, our pineapples turned out well too there's one of them and then uh, up top here we have our crest I bought that online from a company that makes all sorts of stencils and I really like this one this is what they sent me and you can see I had to reduce the size of the of the stencil before I transferred it to my blue masking film and if you look closely I also changed the style of the leaves a little bit these leaves here have sort of an S curve to them and I did that so that they match the leaves on the front. It kind of brings it all together. So the next step is going to be, what's the next step? It's going to be applying a couple coats of white bond poly. That's going to give us a nice sheen, seal the finish a little bit. Then I have to attach the seat. And then we're going to come back and have our very first look at the completed bench. Be right back. Well, once again, I've managed to take a very simple shop project and turn it into a, a, a major production with all of the artwork and everything. But uh, I really wanted to do something outside of my comfort zone. And I, I sure got it with uh, all of the stenciling and uh, all of the risk involved with making that. So anyway, this concludes our series on the making of the boot bench. Take care of yourselves, be careful out there, and as always, thank you for stopping by, and see you next time. Wasn't that great?